Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're gonna to be installing a Kurt trailer wiring harness kit on a 2020 Hyundai Kona. This four pole trailer wiring kit is gonna allow you to be able to hook up to your four pole trailers and your tail light signals, which include your running lights, your brakes, as well as your turn signals are going to transfer to your trailer, letting the people behind you know what you're doing and keeping you safe and legal. Now this is module protected, so if you have any back feed of electrical, it's actually gonna keep your vehicle safe and that's added, you know, peace of mind there. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is using OEM style connections that plug into your factory ones. So it's pretty well plug and play. And overall, it's pretty easy to do. You're gonna have to run some wires, pull some interior panels and run an electrical wire up to the battery but I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it, and that way you can have your wiring harness installed. To begin our install, I like to take the entire harness and kind of separate it, and that way I know where everything's gonna be running. So first we'll start off, we have our four pole connector. And this is what's going to actually attach to your trailer and send the signals to the lights on the trailer. So this will be hanging near the hitch here. That feeds into our module. And this is going to protect your vehicle from any back feed from the trailer. Coming off of the module itself, we have a black wire here. We're going to be attaching the black loom of wire that's included in the kit. This is going to be our power wire. And that power wire is going to run up to the battery and connect to it via a ring terminal on the post. The white wire on the opposite end is our ground wire. So this has a ring terminal. We'll be attaching this to a flat piece of metal uh, a part of the chassis and that way it's grounded. Now the other ones we have here, we have three different connections. So the first one, the brown and red, we actually have a taillight harness and that's gonna be underneath the vehicle. We have our yellow here and this is gonna be our left turn signal, so our driver's side. And the reason this green one is longer is because this is gonna route over to the passenger side for our right turn signal. So now that we have it laid out, Let's start pulling some plastic out. We're gonna begin by pulling our cargo area pieces out as we're gonna to need to gain access to pull this plastic. So you can go ahead and get these out. So now we have our center scuff panel here and we're gonna to wanna to take this off. And you're gonna see there's two plastic push pins on each, each side. So we're going to use a trim panel removal tool get that top button to kind of pop out and then the whole thing should come out. Now if you don't have a trim panel removal tool we have these here at e-trailer or you can simply use a flathead screwdriver. So now to get the scuff panel off you're simply going to pull up and a little bit out. Work on the edges first and you're going to hear those popping and then from there you'll have to lift each side and you're going to hear those clips pop and that should come off. So set this aside. So now with a Phillips head screwdriver, we're going to remove the three Phillips head screws and that's gonna gain us access to our panel and the grommet below, which we'll be running our wires through. Now pulling back this panel, you're gonna to wanna to be careful that you don't overstress it um, as far as pulling it too aggressively because that can actually cause a bend in the plastic and it'll leave a mark permanently. So take your time with this. I'm gonna just take my finger here and kind of my hand below and work my way pulling back and working to find the clips. So now that we have this popped up, I can actually see the grommet, which is tucked down in this corner here. And that's where we're gonna to need to gain access. So to make this a little bit easier, since we're gonna be working in this space and not having to hold this out, I'm gonna take just, I have a strap here. I'm just gonna attach it there and then hook it onto, uh, let's see. I can hook it onto this metal here and tightening this up is gonna hold that pressure at a good point without overdoing it. It's right about there. Now we have room to work. So now we're gonna find this connector here. We're gonna be separating these by pushing this tab in and pulling them apart. Now on your wiring harness, you're gonna find the red and brown. 
and those are going to match up perfectly. So plug those in. So now we're going to pull our grommet out and that's going to be simple. You just kind of peel back at an edge and that should pop through. Now we'll be putting a small slit in the grommet to feed our wires through and that way it seats back up. But for now, we can run our yellow wire and connectors through. You can see these poking through here. I'm also going to route our four pole through here as well. I'm also going to take our spool of power wire here and feed one end up through the hole and that way we can make our connection to the black wire off of our module and that connection can stay inside the vehicle rather than being exposed to the elements. So just feed this up enough to where you have slack to be able to make that connection. So now with our black power wire here, we're going to take that end we just fed up and connect these together using the butt connector included in the kit. Now I do suggest after any electrical connection is made with the butt connector, I always go back, give it a quick tug just to make sure it's not going to separate and that your crimps are done properly. So now we'll be taking our white ground wire here and you're going to see the ring terminal attached to it. it has a flat side and then also a side that has a little bit of that gap. We're going to want that flat side to be against the raw metal. Now when looking for a spot for the ground you're really just looking for raw metal that generally isn't unpainted or that is unpainted so any of these spots here as long as there's nothing behind there that you're going to hit you should be able to mount pretty easy so we're going to put it right about here so self tappers can be tricky at times making sure that they're pressed against and have enough force to go through the metal but sometimes they fall out of the bit so little tip if you don't have magnetic you can grab a little piece of paper towel and then press that head into there and that's going to hold it in place quite a bit better. Now with our ground actually mounted up, you're going to want to make sure that it's tight enough to where that ring terminal is not going to move around, but you don't really need to overdo it with a self tapper as it can actually strip it out. So we have that mounted. The next thing we're going to want to do while we're in this panel is get our module mounted up. And we're going to accomplish that by using double sided tape on the flat side and really any open space that it's not going to have any clearance issues should be fine. And it looks as if we have a gap uh, on the plastic on the inner fender here. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it right here with that double sided tape and it should stay in place just fine. So now we have our module mounted up and that should be nice and tucked back to where we shouldn't see it and it's also going to stay in place. So while we're up here, we're also going to take our green wire and where this scuff panel was, we're going to actually route this kind of in here and it's going to hide under that scuff panel when we're done installing. But we're going to kind of repeat that same process and get to our tail light plug up there. So same as we did on the other side, we have our Phillips screws. We're going to pop this back and get to that plug. Now with our panel popped from the clips here, we can reveal a grommet that's going to be similar to the one on the driver's side. So we'll go ahead and pop this grommet out and feed our green wires through here. Now there's going to be a dust panel here and we actually have it removed because that was necessary for the hitch install. So if you have this in place, you are going to have to remove that. It's going to be two plastic push pins as well as a 10 millimeter nut up here. So get that out. And then to find our connection, you're just going to take that wire from the grommet and follow that. And it's going to have, it's going to feed on the back of this plate here. Now this clip, you can see if you pinch each side of it, you can push this through and that's going to gain us access to our plug and allow us to be able to unclip it. Now it's hard to see. I can feel both of them. They are tucked back here. So I'm going to push on that pin, separate them, and then we'll make our connections. 
So getting to the plugs where you're going to be putting your T connectors to can be a little bit tricky and a little pointer. You're basically gonna be reaching up to about this area up into your bumper. Now, if you have larger arms, this could be a little bit tricky for you, but just reach straight up in that pocket and the plug will be facing vertical. So on the bottom one, there is a tab. You'll be able to push that down and lightly pull, and then you can unplug it. And this is what the plug's gonna look like. It does have this little push button here, and that's what I did to release it. So now we're going to attach this end to it. And then our other end is going to go to the other end of that plug. So now that we have those plugged in, I'm gonna be running our power wire up to the battery on the vehicle. So I'm gonna try my best to avoid anything hot or moving. And once I have it routed, I'm gonna show you how I did it. I have it coming down here and wrapping over. I'm using the hard lines here and that's gonna keep it out of the way of the suspension. From here, I just follow some of the factory wiring and plumbing here and I just kind of zip tied along. Now to make it a little bit easier and not have to go under the middle of the car and be protected, I actually just took off, there's a few 10 millimeter little nuts here that hold this under panel tray on. So if you zip those off, there's gonna be four of them. There's also this plastic push and that simply just drops down. And that's gonna allow us to run our wire pretty easily under here. There's nothing that's gonna cause any issue and it's gonna be protected by the under coating here. From there, we're going to route it up into the engine bay and the battery is on the driver's side. So we're going to fish it through using a plastic airline tube. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can kind of get away using either a wire hanger or a string. It's pretty much a straight shot. You can see through there, but you're going to want to be able to pull that wire through. So using this fish wire technique is going to help. If you don't have an airline tube, you can simply electrical tape it onto that wire or string or whatever you may have and then you can pull it up gently to the top and that will pull it up to the battery. Now we can pull our excess wire through and the same thing I'm going to try to route it with existing lines here. There's plenty to zip up and you're going to want to stay away. There's a sway bar, there's some steering and overall the engine can get warm so keeping it closer to the brake booster or towards the firewall is gonna be ideal. And here's our battery positive. So now I'm gonna cut off our extra power wire here as we do have quite a bit. And right here should be fine. Now with this end, we're gonna go ahead and splice it. So now you're going to grab your fuse holder uh, that is supplied in the kit and it is pre-stripped here so you can just simply pull this end off and now we're going to use our butt connector also included in the kit so with our ring terminal we'll just simply slide that on there crimp this down we'll be putting it onto our positive terminal post. So we're gonna use this 10 millimeter here and we'll just loosen this up. Now with that off, I'm gonna kind of route this here just to make it a little bit cleaner. And same thing with our ground ring terminal that we did previous. You're gonna want that flat spot to make contact with the metal like that. And when tightening this down, you're gonna to wanna to use hand tools and not power tools. So now all we need to do is open up our fuse holder, take our fuse that came in with the kit Place that in there. Cap that up. And now we can go ahead and test our wiring and make sure it works. So we're gonna be testing our light functions with a four pole tester. We have these here available at e-trailer. Another way that you can also test is hooking up to your trailer to see if the lights are working accordingly. But sometimes it's nice to have this tester because it keeps it separate 
just the vehicle. And that way, if your trailer wiring has any issues, it's not giving you a false signal that your vehicle wiring's bad. So let's run through the cycles. First, we have our corner lights or our running lights. Next, we're gonna do our left turn signal. Now our right turn signal. And then finally, our brakes. So now we have everything in place. Our wires are looking good. Really, what we need to do is just finish up the final touches. And part of that is gonna be making a little cut on our grommet to gain space for those wires to fit through. And then actually putting it back in place and siliconing that up to give that watertight seal again. And just kind of put a dab around where those wires are and feel free to go pretty heavy on here as it's gonna create that seal. You just wanna make sure that that grommet is seated properly and not gonna have any airspace through it. Now don't forget, we do have two grommets total, so we're gonna to want to make sure that we do the same procedure on this one and go back with that silicone and fill it up. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt Trailer Wiring Harness Kit for a 2020 Hyundai Kona. Thanks for watching.